All right, welcome to Act Two of uh, Romeo and Juliet. We're going to read and discuss the entire act and talk about how to fill out your reader's diary uh, as going as you're going along to get a little bit more out of what you read. So, as we learned in the first act, which was all exposition, we learned who the characters were, uh, what the setting was, and what the basic situation was, which is basically exactly what the initial chorus told us, and that there are these two families, and they're of the same social class, and they've been fighting. And they had an old fight, but it kind of broke out now into some new violence. The prince gets mad, and he tells him to stop it, or he's going to kill them both. And then, um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess you could say, their children, they both have, um, both families have an only child, one boy, one girl, and the two uh, meet up inexplicably and fall immediately in love mm, at a party. And then they find out after the fact that they're actually enemies. And that's where we are right now. Um, so act two of Romeo and Juliet. We start with the prologue. The prologue um, only happens twice in Romeo and Juliet. It happens at the beginning of act one and the beginning of act two. And after that, we just assume the audience knows what's going on. But at this point, this is kind of like the check. It's almost like the teacher checking in on you. Like, did you get what just happened? Do you understand the problem right now? Because this is what they're doing. They're, they're telling you, okay, here's the situation. This is why it's bad. What's gonna happen next? Okay, so it's a great setup, a nice hook for the next part of the reading. Here's how it goes. Now old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young affection gapes to be his heir. That fair for which love groaned for and would die, with tender Juliet matched is now not fair. Now, Romeo is beloved and loves again, alike bewitched by the charm of looks. But to his foe supposed he must complain, and she still loves sweet bait from fearful hooks. Being held a foe, he may not have access to breed such vows as lovers used to swear. And she, as much in love, her means much less to meet her new beloved anywhere. But passion lends them power, time means to meet, tempering extremities with extreme sweet. Now, your job as the reader as we go along is to mark things that you don't understand so you can go back to them later and make sure that you do. So as we're reading, we're supposed to be marking um, words or phrases that don't make a ton of sense, at least not in this context, because things have changed over 400 years and sometimes the meaning is different. A lot's the same, though, so we can usually make good sense out of it. So what did you find in the prologue that was a little... Well, something that I thought was interesting is that you had mentioned in the in Act One how Juliet has way less freedoms being a woman of that time. And it actually explicitly states that she doesn't have the same kind of access mm -hmm. um, at all. Yeah, she, her she means can't go much less to meet her new beloved anywhere. And that's something that we don't understand in our culture because girls can generally go and do what they want, you know, with some restrictions. But in Juliet's time, girls, especially if her social class had to go somewhere, they have to have a chaperone everywhere they go. Everybody's gonna see what they're doing. So she can't just go sneak out and see the enemy of her house. You know, she can't go see him at all. So yeah. It does I love the foreshadowing though, but passion lends them power. Time means to meet mm -hmm. tempering extremities with extreme sweet. So an extremity is something like something well extreme, something like bad things going on that are um, a little hard to manage, but they put up with it because of what they can get out of it, the extreme suite of being together. So right at the beginning says that fair for which love groaned for and would die. Oh yeah. The, what, he's ta what he's talking about here is like that fair for which love groaned for. So Romeo was, oh, in love with Rosaline. That's gone. That died. He's, and it was replaced because now with tender Juliet is matched. So he loved Rosaline. She didn't love him back. He found another girl that was prettier and better. And oh, here's the good part. Likes him back. Which is really helpful. It's a step up for mm -hmm. Romeo. It's a step up. It's <laughs> never happened before. What, what are you going to do with that? You know, so that's where we are. They both love each other and they have a problem. How are they going to see each other? And because they love each other so much, they're going to go above and beyond to be able to do it. So that's where we start the scene. Mm -hmm. Scene one. A lane by the wall of Capulet's Orchard. It's after the party. Romeo enters. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back, dull earth, and find thy center out. He turns around and he climbs the wall and leaps down within it. 
into the Capulets' backyard, basically, because he's crazy. Okay, um, enter Benvolio and Mercutio. Romeo, my cousin Romeo, he is wise and all my life hath stolen him home to bed. He ran this way and leapt this orchard wall. Call, good Mercutio. Nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo, humors, madman, passion, lover, appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme and I'm satisfied. Cry but I, me, pronounce but love and dove. Speak to my gossip Venus one fair word. He heareth not, he stirreth not, he moveth not. The ape is dead and I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg and quivering thigh, and the domains of their adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. To would anger him to raise a spirit in his mistress circle. <laughs> Come, he hath hid himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best be befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. <sighs> Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Hmm. Go, then, for tis in vain to seek him here that means not to be found. Okay. So this is an edited scene. If you go to the original online, you'll see there's some more words to it. And all of them basically are um, Mercutio being as rude as possible to Romeo to try to get him to come out and fight him. Not, not really like fight, fight, but come out and put up a fight because I'm kind of insulting you and your, your girlfriend. These boys still think that he's in love with Rosaline. So Mercutio is making fun of him for being in love. He's talking about Rosaline in a very familiar and kind of unpleasant way. And just trying to get Romeo to come out of the bushes and be like, don't talk about her like that. <laughs> but Romeo doesn't care because Mo Romeo's moved on. He's, um, even though he's listening to all these insults, he's like, you don't even know. I'm <laughs> he's, he's got plans. He's, he's moved on. But Mercutio thinks that he can say some nasty things about Rosaline and get him to come out. And Benvoli is like, whoa, you're going to make him mad. And he's like, I'm not saying anything wrong. Uh, whatever. So this is where we end up at the, at the end of this scene and the beginning of the big scene, the scene two, which is called the balcony scene. Okay, let me solve some problems here. Problem solved. Problem solved. Okay, I have a, a it's interesting here where it says, um, uh, Mercutio says, to raise a spirit in his mistress's circle. Oh yeah, that's kind of a, okay, part of why this is so edited like it is, is because there's some very inappropriate pieces here. What he's saying is, I'm talking about Rosaline's body parts to kind of get him mm -hmm. mad, but I'm not talking about having an, a relationship with her. So that that's a actually really f kind of dirty section there that we're not going to explain outright. He's saying, I'm not into her like that. I'm just saying stuff to get him mad. Let's see what else. This one ha is, is a short one, so that's helpful. But there are still words, I think, in there. There is some, um, you know, there's some references again to love being blind mm -hmm. and, and to Venus, another mytho mythology piece. We don't learn about mythology in, in our school really at all. So um, if you don't know who Venus and Cupid are, this actually is challenging because they use them a lot because um, they symbolize love, two different styles of love. Venus is about the kind of love between men and women and Cupid is about love in general and about the um, way that love happens so quickly and so unexpectedly and so painfully sometimes. So clearly that's going to come up in Romeo and Juliet a lot. What is truckle bed? I don't know. I mean, I did know. Truckle. It's like a I'll little my truckle bed. Yeah. Um, it's like a trundle bed. Um, like a pull out. Pull out. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. going to a friend's yeah. house, sleeping on the couch. <laughs> He's yeah. crashing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't want to sleep out in the cold. He's mm -hmm. done. He's not going to wait for Romeo anymore. And they don't have to because Romeo has something to do. Okay. Here we are. Scene two is Capulet's Orchard. And by that, it's just like a big fenced in backyard area. And uh, there's a balcony. Now this all would have been seen on Shakespeare's stage, which basically had a balcony over the main stage. And um, in those scenes, Juliet was on the balcony and Romeo was on the floor and they really had not a lot of 
blocking or movement together and they didn't touch and they, you know, none of that, you know, there was really no physical connection. Now, if you watch any movie about Romeo and Juliet, they've amended that. They've changed it so that uh, Romeo and Juliet are somehow together so that they can have more of a physical scene. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but just so that they have like a more of a connection that the audience can see, you know, they can, they can hold hands, they can hug, they can kiss, you know, it makes it seem like their relationship is moving forward. Imagine how hard this was for two guys in Shakespeare's time to really sell it that Romeo and Juliet had fallen so desperately in love that they're going to move this along pretty quickly. All right, so here we go. We have our Romeo and our Juliet selected. He just has scars that never felt a wound. That was in response to Mercutio making fun of him. Mercutio doesn't know. He's never been in love like this. Oh, Juliet now appears above at the window at the balcony. <gasps> but soft. <laughs> what light from y through yonder window breaks? It is the east, the side. and Juliet <laughs> is the sun. Right, I got the sun. You got the sun. Right yeah, now. you should. You should look up that way when you're been. talking. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. So let's, pa let's pause for a second so I don't interrupt you later. Um, I will interrupt you later, though. Um, this is a little speech, and part of it's cut out, but it's talking about the moon and about um, how the the people who worship the moon or the moon was like still held as um symbolic of the goddess of virginity diana and uh he doesn't want her to he wants her to know that she's more beautiful than that and he doesn't want her to be associated with that for obvious reasons his last girlfriend was really into that being chased and not you know going out with guys and stuff true yeah so that's really what he's saying is like forget that juliet look at you you're brighter than the sun you're better than the moon Go ahead. Uh, oh, that she knew she were. Uh, she speaks, yet she says nothing. Hmm. What of that? Her eye discourses. I, I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. To the fairest, two of the fairest stars in all the heaven having some business do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there? The, wait, what? What if her eyes were? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're there. And they... What if her eyes were there? They in her head. The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight. daylight oh my gosh. Just keep going. It's Sorry. Hard, it's hard text. As daylight doth a lamp, her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Okay, pause. This is really creepy. Okay, first of all, remember, he's stalking her. He's in her backyard. She doesn't know it. She's out on her balcony, it, probably thinking she's in private. And he's all like, oh, she looks like she's going to say something. I think I'm going to talk to her. No, I'm not. I can't do it. She's looking like she's talking to the stars, maybe. But they are looking at her and going, oh, hey, if we could just like, your star, your eyes could come Fluck up here. Your eyeballs out. Yeah, this is really weird. And then the stars would be in, like, they would exchange, like stars in her eye sockets and her <laughs> eyeballs in the sky. And what it's, what it's trying to say is that the eyes, of, her eyes would be so bright that they would just make it daylight on earth and all the birds would be awake and all that. And that's just saying again, once again, lightness and beauty are one. She's yeah. so beautiful. Her eyes are so bright and beautiful. And then if the stars were, in her eyes then the rest of her would outshine them he's just comparing her to stars in a way that makes her seem so much more brilliant and, and beautiful than they ever could be it's very sweet and yet really creepy okay see how she leans her cheek upon her hand oh that i were a glove <sighs> upon that hand that i might touch that cheek yeah that's also creepy yeah. she's going <sighs> and he's all like wish i was a glove on that hand Back up, mister. You just met her. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, he's really into her. He's in love. I, me. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo. Romeo. Wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. She gets right to the point. She's right to the point. Why? She doesn't say, where are you, Romeo? A lot of people think that wherefore art thou, Romeo, means where are you? She doesn't, 
She's not even thinking about that. She's thinking about why does he have to be Romeo? She just mm. fell in love with a guy and found out that he was Romeo Montague. Why? And then she's like, well, look, if you'll just stop being a, a, a Capulet or you stop being a Montague, that's great. Or if not, I'll stop being a Capulet. Because right. she's saying that if it wasn't for our names, we could be together. So she just jumps right in. That is the heart of the problem. And Romeo hears that and says, not to her. He's, it's an aside. He's talking to himself. Shall I hear more? Shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? Is it nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man? Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. A super famous line, so if you've never heard this one, that, that would be very strange, but right now she's talking about how a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Romeo by any other name would be as great as he already is, so he doesn't really have to be a Montague. Montague is not a body part. It's not like you can't, I mean, you can't take your foot off, but you can take your name and get rid of it, right? Um, so think about these things. Like, first of all, roses don't need to be called roses in order to be the beautiful and, well, you know, good smelling flowers. If their name was Pickle teen. Pickle teen. They'd be smelling. They would still smell sweet. good. They would still look good. They would just have a really stupid name. <laughs> so says oh. you. It's bad. <laughs> and if he was not Romeo Montague, if he just decided now he's going to just be Bob Mar Morris. <laughs> I heard <say> Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Marley. One love. <laughs> then, then he would be fine. <laughs> yeah, they would have no problems. Together. Yeah, okay, moving on. <laughs> I take thee at thy word. Call but call me but love, and I, I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I never will be Romeo. No, no, wait a second. She was talking to herself, right? And he's like, hey, I, hey, I'll do it. She didn't even know he was there. <laughs> She's on her balcony in the dark. Hey, I've been eavesdropping. And he jumps out of the bushes and talks to her. What man art thou that thus be screened in night so stumbless on my counsel? By name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to, to myself because it is an enemy to thee. I had a, had I it written, I would tear the word. So isn't that cute? He's like listening to her say how if it wasn't for his name, she could be in love with him. And, and he's like, I can't tell you my name. I don't want it anymore. Like, <laughs> Get rid of that thing. I, whatever you want to call me is fine. Isn't that sweet? That's really sweet for a stalker. Jumping yeah. out of the bushes. Yeah. It's pretty good. My okay. ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance. Yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering what thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings did I o'er perch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do that dares love attempt, therefore thy kinsmen are no let oh isn't that sweet he had wings lent to him by love and that's how he got over the wall he climbed it he just climbed it but he, he was inspired to climb it mm -hmm. because you know oh. love yeah if they do see thee they will murder thee alack there lies more peril in thine eye than 20 of their swords look thou but sweet and i am proof against their enmity I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their sight, and but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued, prorogued, wait, wanting of thy love. Yes, he says, I'd rather die than not have your love. That's a word. He's, he just met her tonight, but mm. he couldn't live without knowing that she loved him, or at least being around her, because he loves her. By whose direction foundst thou out this place? Oh, geez, he just, he was there. I'm, okay, I'm not going to argue it. Go ahead. How'd you know where I live? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, this is really no, weird. His, his, her bedroom. Her okay, bedroom. wait, that was oh, an accident. Yeah, okay, he just accidentally yeah. ended up outside her bedroom. It okay, it's a big house. Okay. Right. Keep going. Uh, by love, who first did prompt me to inquire, he lent me counsel and I lent him eyes. Because he's blind. I am no pilot yet, sport thou as far as that vast shore washed with the farthest sea, I would adventure. No, so this such, is, for such merchandise. Yeah, it's a lovely line, actually. Um, for, once again, love is blind, love is Cupid. Okay, so he lent, he was the eyes looking for the love uh, that was driving him forward. But this this line about, um, he's not a pilot, and pilots back then didn't fly planes. There weren't Shit. planes 400 years ago. So a pilot was somebody who navigated the ship and sent it places. He's not one, he doesn't know how to do that. But he's saying that it doesn't matter. He would go to the farthest shore on a boat, even though he can't drive a boat. And uh, because of such merchandise, she is treasure for him, he would go anywhere for such treasure. He talks a good he's talk. Sweet. Yeah, he's sweet. He's got words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush bepaint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak tonight. Fain I would dwell on form. Fain, fain deny what I have spoke. But farewell compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet. If thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. At lovers' perjuries, then say, Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou think'st I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee, and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else not for the world, in truth, my fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayst think my behavior light. Trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those, than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess. But thou, but that thou overhurtst, ere I was ware, my true love's passion. Therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love, which the dark night hath so discovered. Okay, we need to pause for a second. Yeah, That's quite a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, she realizes what she's done. I mean, the, this first part was like, like surprise. Oh, you're there. What are you doing here? You she's could like, be killed. And he says all these nice things. She's like, oh, oh, dang. Uh, I should take all that back. Um, mm, I wish you hadn't heard all that, but you did. Yeah. You probably think that I'm really easy to get, but I'm, I swear to you, I'm not. I'm not like that. I'm not that kind of girl, but it's kind of too late now. I'll take it all back if you want me to. I'll, I'll play hard to get if that will make you think better of me. Um, I'll end up proving to you that I am more faithful and true than the, those kinds of girls who would have been more like mm, try harder and you know, that kind you of thing. You gotta she's, work for it. Yeah. So she's like, don't think I'm easy. I'm not. I'm. I just love I, you. Yeah. This is, was an accident and here it is, you know. Um, so pardon me. Sorry. I told you I loved you before I meant to. That's totally fair. Yeah. I like that she does that. Yeah. It comes clean right off the bat. Yes. Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear, that tips with silver all those, these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the really moon, Sorry. the inconstant moon, that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise yeah, very That was a bad choice of his. Okay, so he's <laughs> swearing his love, but he's like, I swear by the moon, and she's like, the moon? It changes constantly. Yeah, that's probably not a good swear. Not very there. sturdy. And yeah, don't steady. use that one. It's like, you know, I've got a Bible, put your hand on the Bible. I don't know, but not the moon. The moon isn't, yeah, bad choice. Okay. What shall I swear by? Well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. Oh, there's a cut here and I wish it was still there. Cause what she, what she tells him in the real script is she says, um, swear by yourself. You are the God of my idolatry. She's like, the only thing I really think is great right now that you can swear by is you. Which is really super, super creepy, which is probably, probably why I got cut here. So she just jumps into this part here that I have no joy in. I mean, I have joy in this. This is good. I have joy in this, but I don't have any joy in what? How fast it's happening. Okay. So I have no joy of this contract tonight. 
It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. Sweet, good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when the next we meet. Good night, good night, as sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Okay, so she says goodbye. She says, how too fast, so good, good night, bye. This is where it should have ended. Yes. And this is how you end the first contact with the love of your life. You're mm-hmm. like, ooh, I do love you, but you know what, this is happening really fast, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Yeah. We're pulling some G's. Yeah, I'll we'll text slow you down. Later. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? Whoa. Little, oh, oh, oh. A slow forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there. Yeah, that's there. what Romeo says, though. He's like, but wait, what about me? I think he wants to smooch again. Oh, well, he didn't know. Remember in Shakespeare's one, they don't get to do that. And know, she's on a right. balcony. There's no it's satisfying true. happening. You're totally right. So, mm. too many movies. Yeah, but she does react like, what the heck? Mm-hmm. What does she say? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. Oh, is that all? I gave thee mine before thou didst request it, and yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. Oh, this is so classic Shakespeare love okay. language. It is so sweet. So he's like, wait, but what? You can't just leave me like this. And, 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 and let's, let's pretend that he's got no bad motives here, right, but right. the glove on hand thing makes me think he's got some bad motives. Right. But he's saying, you can't leave me like this. And she's like, but what, what, what do you want from me? And he's like, your vow of love. And she's like, Dang, I already gave that, but I wish I had it back. And he's like, wait, huh? <laughs> no take backs. No, no, no take backs. <laughs> She's like, no, so I could give it back to you. And then she says these super beautiful lines. My bounty is as boundless as the sea. My love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have. <laughs> For both are infinite. It's pretty sweet. It's huge. She's not playing around here. She didn't know what, remember she was look to like, but looking like he moved thing. You're like, I don't even, I'm not even considered marriage. Mm-hmm. And now she's like, you're the love of my life. And she's talking deep about it. Yeah. And he's like, you're the love of my life. Wait, eyeshadowing. <laughs> Luckily, they're, it's true. Yeah. It's true. They do love each other. But it's not going to turn out well. All right, you've got to. Oh, interruption from the nurse. Hello. I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Anon, good nurse. Oh, wait. Anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. So she says goodbye, and she's like, wait, wait, not goodbye. Stay. Goodbye, not goodbye. I'll be back in a minute. I'll be back. So she leaves for a minute. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard. Being in night, all of this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. So in modern language, you might say something like, um, oh, am I dreaming? Dude, Somebody this can't be real. Me. Yeah, pinch me. It can't be real. He's, this is the best case scenario for him. He falls in love with a girl. She falls in love right back. He didn't even know that could happen. They don't just string you along? No. Uh-huh. Not this one. You have to sneak up on them when they're not listening. Or they don't know. That's not good advice. Oh, don't don't do that don't do that don't stalk people it's not effective the end full stop it's tragic oh right okay uh juliet re-enters three words dear romeo and good night indeed if that thy bent of love be honorable thy purpose marriage send me word tomorrow by one that i'll procure to come to thee where and what time thou wilt perform the rite and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Aw, okay. What did she just do? She's like just setting like up marriage. To yeah, him. she yeah. did. She proposed to him. Now, this is why Shakespeare is really cool for women. Do you think very many women in old 400-year-old literature propose to men? Like, say, this is, this is what has to happen. She's saying, look, think of any. if you love me, 
then you have to marry me. Uh, and, and here's the honest part of it. She can't do this any other way. She can't have a boyfriend. She can't sneak out to see him. The only way that she can have a relationship with a guy is if she marries him. And she's in desperate situation here. She knows her parents have other ideas. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're the one. Make it happen. This is real. You really like love tomorrow. me. You need to make it happen like tomorrow. Like I want to know what the plan is. Okay. How forward and bold is that? She's got guts. Yeah, she no, she also could be over reacting to a really early romance, but maybe she knows that her time to make those kind of choices for herself right. is limited. Yeah. So here she's going to jump on this. This is a cute kid that she just met. And he's handsome and he's well-spoken. He seems smart and he's romantic. Dang. Okay. Mine. And he's, Marry me. And he's also from a family that's of the same status. Yeah. There's a lot so, of good about this. The saying, match is pretty good. If they weren't sworn enemies yeah, until yeah, that today. Part is, is kind of bad. Um, and it makes it so they have to do everything secretly, which is the really bad part. Okay. So she says, if you're serious, you need to figure out how we're going to get married. And that means, because she can't go, so she'll have to send somebody else to go talk to him about it. Okay. okay. Do I have another thing? Oh, madam. That's the I'm coming on. But if thou means not well, I do beseech thee. Madam. By and by, I come. To cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times good night. And she leaves. A thousand times the worst to want thy light. Love goes toward love, has schoolboys from their books. But love from love towards school with heavy looks. I've always hated this line because I'm a teacher. And <laughs> it, it kind of grieves me that 400 years ago, people were giving school such a hard time. Because <laughs> it, it says, I don't want to go to school. I know. <laughs> love goes towards love as schoolboys from their books. Okay, so it like, goes quickly and happily towards love because they're leaving their... Okay, never mind. And then they love from love is like uh, towards school with heavy looks. So he feels like in this moment where he's having to leave Juliet, he's having to go to school. Seriously, Shakespeare, help us out here. Yeah, let them get their read on yeah. so they can read you. Huh. Thanks. Dork. All right. Juliet, however, said she was leaving, but she wasn't really. Hist. Romeo, hist. Is it my soul that calls upon my name? Romeo. My what? Yes. My yes. Shall we underline this all together? Yeah. We can. Although, you know what? Let's address it right a second now. Sure. There's a big cut here, as you can see in the script, where it's got the little things. Because when she comes out, she's going, Hist, hey, hey. And she says this line that's been cut about how she wished she had the ability to whistle like a falconer. Like, she wished she had a falconer's voice, and she wished she could, like, whistle him back, like, that kind of, I can't even do it either. I understand how she feels. Well, well. She wants to make, like, a okay. bird call so that it doesn't alert the authorities, but it calls him back. Um, because he's gone. He starts to leave. And uh, so she asked for a falconer's voice. Nies is a word, a French word, I guess, for a young falcon. And so when he comes back, he hears her say that. And he's like, yes, my beautiful little fal fal uh, falcon girl. Um, it's just his way of, you know, using the language. Continuing the yeah. Yeah. play on words. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Moving back into. At what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? Oh, they forgot. By the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And thou still stay to have thee still forget, <laughs> forgetting any other home but this. Tis almost morning. I would have thee gone. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thy eyes, sleep in night. Oh, she, oh, she left. Yeah, she left. But isn't it, it was so much the whole like, goodbye. goodbye. No, goodbye. Oh, yeah, There's a huge chunk taken there too that I thought was really beautiful yeah. language about the birds, the, the nightingale. Oh, and, and I the, usually draw a picture about that too. Yeah. And, the, and everybody has actually seen this in, in class. I, they've seen the picture of the, the wanton child with the bird on a string. Uh, because there's a whole thing uh, back in in Shakespeare's time, so Shakespeare had known about this practice. Children didn't have video games; they didn't have um, electronic devices of any kind. But they would do some fun things, like tie a string around a songbird, you know, just catch a bird, 
try a str string around like I put it on a leash and give it to like a toddler to play with. Now this is fun for hours or minutes, at least until the bird dies. Because if you, sorry, so if you pull the bird in and it like hops around and it makes noises and stuff, it's very entertaining for a while. It's usually fatal to the bird. And so the, the language here is Juliet saying, I wish I had a bird on a string. I'm like my bird on a string, I would just, I would pull you back, but I'd probably kill you with too much love. <laughs> Funny joke. So awful, so awful. Very sweet, you love that language, huh? <laughs> I <don't> remember. <laughs> really, you said, you said it was really pretty, pretty language. <laughs> no, but I mean, the sounds that, they, so maybe some people don't know that there are birds that call when the morning is coming and there are also birds that, that they're, most vocal mm -hmm. when the sun yeah, sets. Yeah, that comes up later in another thing. It does. The spoiler true. alert. Mm -hmm. Birds are kind of a thing here. We had the falcon, and then we had the little one on a string, and we're going to have some larks and birds are nightingales. They're coming symbolic. up a lot, and and they are kind of symbolic of love as well. So, oh, that's an interesting mm -hmm. like research paper topic is the use of birds and symbology, even in just this one. Yes, because we just had falconer. Extra assignment for everybody. Okay, and go. Romeo is left to say something. Sleep dwell upon thy eyes, thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I, uh, would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest? Paper. Uh -huh, we'll we'll touch there. on that. Yeah. Hence will I to my ghostly father's cell his help to crave and my dear half to tell. So this line actually tells us a lot about Romeo, the situation and, and what's about, what's just happened, what is um, about to happen. Because first of all, he's like, he's very romantically inclined toward her. He's like, sleep, dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. So that's like, sleep well. And then he's like, oh, I wish I could dwell there too. So it is a little creepy. He's, he's wishing he could be with her. He's, he's a teenager. He's really feeling his hormones. A little, yeah, or or because he loves her. Mm -hmm. All the things. And that. And he's like, okay, and I'm going to my ghostly father's cell. His father's not a ghost, in case you're worried about that. Ghostly means right. spiritual, right. like a spirit. And spiritual could mean things more like holy, like the holy um, uh, reverend, the friar that he's going to go see, the guy that he goes to for confession and advice and things like that. So it's a man of the church and his name is Friar Lawrence. We're about to meet him, and he's the last major character that you're going to meet. And so he needs to go to his cell. That's basically his personal quarters at the abbey, where these friars would be uh, practicing their um, their work. And uh, he's a Franciscan friar, and so that's going to come up here in a little bit. It's kind of, um, they did a lot of hospital work, a lot of help with the, the sick um, and folks like that. So Medicine. yeah, so that's coming up. Um, that's actually very important. You can tell by the eyes. Eye shadowing. Mm -hmm. So, let's go. Um, do you want to talk? Two? Do we want to do a little of our um, yeah. diary? Oh, we should do. Uh, yeah, let's get the scene two diary. Out. So I do. Um, I, uh, so we we kind of passed over it, but Romeo on the page before on page eighteen says. Oh, did we do um, our, act, our scene one diary? Not really. Not really. Well, we did talk about words and stuff. Yeah, we it did. It was a real quick one. Yeah. Let's just double check here. Sure. Um, let's back backtrack some. We've Somewhere. got our words to put in. Uh, we need to make sure. What was Benvolio's uh, motivation? Trying to figure out. Uh, he saw that, uh, that Romeo disappeared on yeah. the fence, and he's like, he's hey, Mercutio. Yeah, yeah he's going to worry about him. Yeah, Help me look for him. Yeah. But then he realizes Mercutio is just going to make him mad. So Right, so stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And then Mercutio was trying to legitimately like make Laura him mad. Now. Yeah. in a way that a boy him. might like, well if we have to find him then yeah bring it out boy yeah. <laughs> he was gonna fight him and just like more like word fight it's not like he was being super aggressive with him but he was just being a um he's looking for doing the uh, his friends are like the good cop bad cop with him that's totally true yeah and then romeo in that scene is just hiding yes he's not ready mm -hmm. to leave right he isn't okay so, so that gives you a little bit of the plot notes too. They're just trying to get their friend back. So words then. So for definitions um, for balcony scene, for scene mm -hmm. two, um, this one here the on page 18, um, uh, then death prorogued. Prorogued. Mm -hmm. Prorogued. Pro usually is before. like before, mm -hmm. I would guess in this. In this. No, it, just, it means put off. Uh, like prolonged almost? Yes. 
Is it just an, an old? I mean, it might be. Is yeah, it a yeah. prolixitous mm-hmm. way of? Yeah, it's. Did I, did I use that accurately? Uh, it's no, it's all like old-fashioned it. way. Of maybe you did. Prolixitous. That's so out of prolixity that I don't even know. Mm. I, I'm just impressed. I remembered even <sighs> this, the letters that go. See, into this it. is how we expand our vocabulary. I the good that. news is about this is that if it's a 400 year world year old word that nobody uses, you don't have to use it. Yeah, you you can, and that's cool. Maybe you can bring it back. Uh, all you have to do is make oh sure. Oh my gosh, how meta is that? Yeah. Bringing prolixity back? Ha! Oh. Somebody start it. You do it. did. You are. Oh, prolixitous. <laughs> yes. So, also, questions we have down here in Juliet's Hoosie Dinky, um, big long thing. Jove. Uh, here, we, here we get back to this uh, lacking of mythology teaching in our schools right now. Jove is another name for Jupiter, who was the, like the head god of the Romans. And uh, so basically what she's saying here is, you know, God knows that um, men who swear they love you might be false. Like, right. Uh, or not even just men, anybody. People who swear they're in love are usually faking it. Is that also then we've got this perjuries before mm-hmm. it. So at yeah, lovers so perjuries. Mm-hmm. Lovers perjuries. Lovers pretend to be in love a lot more often than they really are in love. And that is good advice for all teenagers. A lot of people think they are, say they are, pretend they are, but they're not as lucky or unlucky as folks like Romeo and Juliet to find true love so fast. It's just not mm-hmm. really a thing very often. The last, oh no, there's actually two things here. There's one more that that and and you'll notice too shakespeare like doesn't use full words sometimes but does the apostrophe mm-hmm. so it says i think my behavior light and mm-hmm. correct that is behavior. behavior it is yeah so it just takes the b off and puts the apostrophe so in context you can mm-hmm. hopefully pick, pick it that, out that section of text is something that we call blank verse it's iambic pentameter it's unrhymed iambic pentameter if you look through this text you're going to find places where it's rhymed it's actually written in sonnet form or um, there's like a couplet just to add, um, and a couplet would be two lines that rhyme right next to each other. And those are just for effect, usually following a sonnet, but not always. And then blank verse, which has just got the rhythm of my iambic pentameter. It's like poetic rhythm going through, kind of feels like a heartbeat. And then sometimes there's prose and prose is where it just stops doing that. I'll tell you who talks in prose the most. Um, the nurse, not always, but she often talks in prose. And Mercutio. Ooh. It's weird. He does some beautiful speech that. like uh, Queen Mab. That's in um, blank verse. But sometimes he just like whips out some prose and just uh, lays it down and talks like real people. That's what prose is just not poetry. It's not poetry. It's just regular talk. The servant. Servants don't talk in poetry. Right. And that's why I think the nurses are Not that they that. can't. I think it in this play, it's basically crazy people and... Uh, and servants, unless you're Tybalt, and then you to talk in poetry. Mercutio? No, Tybalt doesn't. Tybalt does? No, he doesn't talk in prose. Got it. I oh, oh I, see, I, I think he's saying. crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy, angry. So then down here, the last thing I have for, in that same speech, um, where she says, uh, therefore pardon me and not impute this yielding to mm-hmm. light love. So <sighs> impute in that case, like don't put down my, this, this the way I've been acting, to me having light love, like being easily in love. Is it so like not confusing the two, like- Yeah, don't apply it to that. Right, don't, okay. Don't, yeah, right. don't put okay. my actions, to, uh, my my yielding, like my giving in so easily down to the idea of me not being- um, She's sincere. Worth, worth yeah. pursuing. She right. wants to be worth pursuing. Yeah. Did you see any others, Fiona, that I didn't from? Um, not really. Just some phrases that may not be easy to like yeah. translate mm-hmm. to for modern thinking, like because the behavior light part, behavior light, like light behavior, meaning not taking it seriously, like flirty and right? uh, not meaningful. And then after that, the have more cunning to be strange. So being, I wish I'd been smart enough to, to act like I didn't want yeah. you in here. I wish I'd known, if I'd known like you were stranger. in the bushes, I would have been like, oh, what are you doing here? You can't do that. Yeah. And that, she just didn't have the opportunity to pretend that she was shy or pretend that she was yep. not into him. Because that's what girls do. You don't immediately, because you don't want to get your heart broken. You have to act like, 
um, you're not interested for a bit, you know, until you find out if they're interested. And right. then you can act a little interested till they act like a little more interested. And it's like this give and it's, take. It's ridiculous. The, she was robbed of that. She didn't get that moment mm -hmm. to like play around to see does he like her like she likes him. She just flat out went, here's how much I like you. Oh, and Chrome, he, you were listening. Yeah. And now he knows. And then what do you do? She Imagine th that happened to you. That would be yeah. like so revealing if you accidentally spilled your heart out in front of the person that you were in love with. True. So character notes on this. Julia obviously begins the whole scene by just expressing her feelings, thinking she's alone. Mm -hmm. And then uh, through, by, through, then she's trying to convince him that no, she meant it. And then by the end, she's like, if you do love me, we're getting married. Yes, yeah, she didn't know. Yes. And I think he, the whole, uh, Romeo the whole time is, for him, it's just like stepping, stair stepping yeah. up. Like, yeah. there's a girl I kiss that I like. She's, not sure. She's talking about me. She actually likes me. I'm talking to her. I'm just going to swear I love her right now. She, <laughs> he, 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 there's no downside there here. Isn't. And she's like, you got to marry me. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll talk to the priest. <laughs> <laughs> He's cool with it. The whole thing is perfect. Done. He doesn't have as to. Long like, as he doesn't have to go to school, he's fine. Because <laughs> this now he goes to school. No. <laughs> Juliet, school. Whoa. Juliet, school. Mm. This is also one of the hints, though, that he is a young boy. And they never tell us how old he is. We know how old that Juliet is. We know that he's old enough to go to parties and stuff with his friends, and to have a friend who's obviously been a soldier. So he's not super young. But he's definitely got a young attitude. Yeah. And he's not very experienced in the world. He's never actually had a girl like him back. Sweet. It's sweet. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the scene where he goes and he meets his mentor, uh, the friar. Do you want to just be uh, Romeo still? Continue with Romeo? Sure. If you'd like to. Okay. Okay. Because okay. right. we can, it's fun to switch things up whenever we mm -hmm. want. Yep. So Friar Lawrence. Okay. So here we go. Um, do you want to do our stage directions? I do, but I keep, you also I'm need so bad at it. I did need a drink. Okay. I'll get your drink. Okay. Um, all right. Here's your drink. I'm going to set it by the mic. Yeah. I'm going to set the scene for you too. Cause it doesn't really tell you. It says that he's at his cell. And I really think that that's not entirely true. I think that because the limitations of the stage for, um, Shakespeare, it would have been an indoor thing where he'd just come in with his basket of herbs. But the reality is he's out picking herbs in the morning because that's what you do. If you're a gardener, you might actually know this, that if you're going to pick a leafy green or a, an herb, you're going to want to do that in the morning because then it, it'll have all the moisture inside it. It'll have stronger essential oils. It'll have better taste and things like that. So he's out picking medicinal plants because that's his gig. And he's doing it first thing in the morning before sunrise. Some interesting words and things in here too, mm -hmm. because he's not conversing with anybody yet. So he's just talking to himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The gray eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the Eastern clouds with streaks of light and flecked darkness like a drunkard reels from forth days past and tightens fiery wheels. Now, where the sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry, I must upfill this, is it osier or osier? Osier. Osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. The earth that's nature's mother is her tomb. What is her burying grave that is her womb? That's, I want you to actually repeat that in a second. Let's stop sure. at that part where it's talking about I must fl uh, uh, fill up this osier cage of ours. Mm. Um, up fill, fill up. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, Osier cage is a basket. And he talks about how he, precious juiced flowers. And they, all that beginning language is like, it's dawn. Yeah. <laughs> the gray eyed morn. He's saying that the night is being replaced by the streaks of light. He talks about Titan's fiery wheels. Again, mythology, the, mm. the sun was pulled in a chariot across the sky in mythology. And so he's saying that it just like, here comes, you know, the advancing day. Here comes day. the sun. Do -do -do -do. Yeah, that's exactly what he said. He just breaks into song. I think he's singing this. Yeah. And, uh, but he says he has to hurry and do it because of the juice and the flowers, you know. Right. And the yeah. burning sun. Mm -hmm. And then he yeah. gets all philosophical. He's going to talk about 
mother nature and all this oh, stuff yes. this but, is a tomb so there's there's the precious two stars but baleful weeds mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so what yeah. is baleful? baleful is bad like baleful yeah. is like full of bad stuff full of evil even there's precious stuff and bad stuff i gotta get them both and th he was gonna explain that though why does he need these things that are both bad and good and if you think about medicine some of the plants that are used for medicine are good for you all the time and some of them are poisons but yeah they're bad for you sure. most of the time unless you use them correctly and he's gathering both and he's gonna tell you why mm -hmm. so the earth that's nature's mother is her tomb what is her burying grave that is her womb and from her womb, children of diverse kind, we sucking on her natural bosom find, many for many virtues excellent, none but for some, and yet all different. O oh, Nicholas, the powerful grace that lies in herbs, plants, stones, and their true qualities, for not so vile that on the earth doth live, but to, to the earth some special good doth give, nor aught so good, but strained from that fair use, revolts from the true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice, being mis misapplied, and vice sometimes by action dignified. Okay, pause for a second. So he's talking about plants and, then... and other things. <laughs> he's talking about anything in nature. Seems to have two sides mm. of it. Like it can be used Duality. for good. Yeah, it can be used for good you can accentuate the positive mm -hmm. or it could be used for bad. Now, one of the things I'd like to talk about at this time, uh, because it's always a controversy is the use of cannabis. So cannabis is a plant that has been used for eons for health purposes and for positive things, but it has also been used at times in negative ways and certainly has gained a negative um, and, and sometimes deservedly negative reputation. So, that is a is proof of what the friar is saying here. It's like, you've got this plant, this powerful, that has great things that you can use it for. Don't or. ruin it. <laughs> don't yeah. Think, like, don't, it, you got to be careful. Use things right. for what is good in them. Don't misapply them. That's how you get things that are vices. There's vices and virtues. Vices are bad things. Virtues are good things. And in the world, all things in the world can be applied to vice or applied to virtue it's all about the choices that you make mm. so interesting and deep i have more to say Ooh. within the infant rind of this small flower poison hath residence and medicine power for this being smelled with that part cheers each part being tasted slays all senses with the heart Two such opposed kings encamp them still in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that yeah. plant. Okay, so there's two parts here. First of all, he's talking about a specific plant. And I think this is kind of interesting because the, the, I don't know if I'm right about this, but I have a theory about the plant. I think he's talking about like foxglove. And there's a lot of foxglove in our area where we um, currently live and do business. So a foxglove plant is beautiful, uh, but it's deadly. And uh, its deadliness is that it stops your heart. Just like the herb that yes. he's talking about, it'll stop your heart. If you eat <clears throat> enough foxglove, you're just, you're a goner. But if you are somebody who grows foxglove for medicinal purposes, you're collecting the plant's essence and you're creating a drug called digitalis. And digitalis actually um, moderates heartbeat and keeps people with heart conditions alive. Crazy. Yeah. So I don't know that I don't know how much of that was known in Shakespeare's time, but it sounds pretty like on target. Like mm -hmm. you sniff the plant, you get a little bit of that plant, and it and it revives you you get too much of that plant and it goes bam you're out yeah so a little is good used correctly it's right used incorrectly it's poison now and then he flips it and says that's like people people have that ability too they can be useful for good but when you turn it towards the other side it can eat up the plant meaning it the evil takes over yeah. yeah pretty deep actually it's deep mm -hmm. all right all right you now romeo comes in on that little conversation he was having with himself tomorrow father 
May I ask real quick? It, I thought it was going to be Benedice, but it's not. Benedicite. 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 Hey, so Benedicite. Um, what early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Therefore thy earliness doth me assure thou art uproused by some distemperature. Or, if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. Ah, uh -huh. so Friar's using his, his senses. He sees Romeo, and Romeo is not, not even dressed like it's the next day. He's like <laughs> dressed like he's gone out to party, and so yeah. probably still has a mask and stuff. Not on. That would be creepy. Or maybe. But we don't know. We don't know that. Um, so uh, he looks at him. He's like, wait a minute. Look, you're a young man. Young guys don't get up like this. Uh, old men. Old men get up early. That's true. Old mm -hmm. people love to get up early, but most young guys, if they're given a chance, you know, they're sleeping in. So mm -hmm. there's one or two things. One, distempered head, <laughs> meaning he's something going on you got to get up early and think about or do. Or two, you never went to bed. <gasps> that last is true. <laughs> the sweeter rest was mine. <gasps> that's God intense. pardon sin. Was thou with Rosaline? Of course, he, oh, that's exactly what he would think, right? Of course he would, because that's all Romeo talked about. Ever. With Rosaline, my ghostly father? No, I have forgot that name, and that name's Woe. Well. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee, ere thou ask it me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me. That's by me wounded. Mm. Both our remedies within thy help and holy physics lie. Lies. Hol holy physic lies. I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise studs my foe. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. And let's talk about that, because like the fire's like, just be plain. Yeah, was that a riddle? Did you just <laughs> Did you just walk in here and like riddle me this early in the yeah. morning? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. that sounds like a riddle. Because Romeo's like, I was wounded by someone, but I wounded them back, and you can <laughs> help us move. This all goes back to the Cupid thing. He was wounded by Cupid's arrow, but luckily mm -hmm. this time, so, so was she. <laughs> and and but intercession, this thing that he's doing right now, is coming for getting help, will also help his enemy. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> the friar's like, what? Let's go. <laughs> not even. On. I don't get you. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. As mine on her, so hers is sent on mine. And all combined, save what thou must combine by holy marriage. When and where and how we met, we wooed and made exchange of love. That's vow. Exchange of vow. Sorry. Of love. Vow of love. Yeah. It's implied. <laughs> I'll tell thee as, I, as we pass, but this I pray that thou consent to marry us today. So that's the story in a nutshell, not a riddle at all. It's like, the, I met this girl, she's a Capulet, we fell in love, and now you have to marry us. Today. And this is what he's doing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, holy St. Francis, what a change is here. Is Rosaline, whom thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Uh, Jesu Maria. Oh, okay, I love it. He's like, ah, oh, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. <laughs> yeah. Holy Saint Maria. Francis. <laughs> what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline. If e'er thou wast thyself and these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline. And art thou changed? Changed, do you see that? Mm -hmm. And art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Women may fall when there's no strength in men. Yeah, uh, okay, the friar obviously has gotten an earful from Romeo in the past about Rosaline, how much yes. he loved her, and, and he cried and he cried, and he was really very upset. Remember, he's been doing this for weeks, his parents have told us that. And so the friar was getting all of that. And now all of a sudden, overnight, literally overnight, Romeo comes in and he's like, I'm marrying another girl. Yeah, Holy St. Francis. Holy St. Francis! What the heck? You crazy, Romeo. Yeah. But then Romeo's got reasons. Go ahead, Romeo. 
They'll chase me off for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving pupil mine. And baits me very love. Not in a grave, to lay one in, another out to have. I pray thee chide not, she whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well thy love did read by rote and could not spell. Mm. Huh. Okay. Yeah, let's I pause love that. So this whole little, yeah, this whole little exchange is interesting because poor Romy was like, "You told me that it was bad the way I was loving yeah. Rosemary, and so he's I like, didn't. Yeah, no, I, I, I know this one. She loves me back, father. Oh, yeah. right. the other one didn't like me. <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, because she knew you were full of it. Seriously." The friar knew all along that Rosaline wasn't going to be into Romeo because Romeo was too immature, really, to understand what he was all about. And so at this moment in time, you got to think of this as the reader. Do you think the friar thinks that Romeo really loves Juliet? Right? Yeah. He There's just got through the whole evidence. counseling him about Rosaline, who he, he didn't really have a thing for. It was really? all in his head really he just and now he's met this girl and he's in love with her or is he and what would the friar think but he says go ahead friar repeat that line i do love this line by the way um oh she knew well thy love did read by rote and could not spell so this is in defense of rosaline yes. she knew that your love wasn't real it yeah. wasn't deep yeah it was just like you were just saying the words you didn't really mean it yeah but come, young waverer, come, go with me. In one respect, I'll, I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancor to pure love. So there it is. The, the friar's motivation in, in one line. Households come by. Yes. He's like, you guys have been fighting. Okay, so I could take this hatred and turn it into love. Okay, I will help you because maybe this will work, okay? It's very manipulative of the friar because he doesn't believe that, he, that Romeo truly loves Juliet. He believes in this moment, Romeo believes himself to be in love with Juliet and he might be able to solve a bigger problem by putting the two together through marriage. Yes. And then these two lines are your big warning. Oh, let us hence, I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow. They stumble that run fast. That. The friar should have taken his own advice. Romeo wants to hurry. And the friar's like, whoa, whoa. Well, bad things happen when you rush things. And yet. And yet. Does he help him plan a wedding? <laughs> yes. Yes, he does. So that's very pretty quickly the end of scene four. So yeah. Five, so let's go three. to our, our diary here. So scene three diary. There um, are some words. Yeah. Okay. We, we stopped a little bit with some of the words, but yeah. But um, was, Osier cage being a basket. Yeah. What is um the the, the actually the benedicite then is yeah, like it's just a greeting and good day like, kind of thing. I think good to see you. Like, like I don't know. We'd have to look it up. That's, that's Latin. Bene yeah, benediction. benediction is like a blessing. Right? Okay. And Benna, like ben Benvolio, is a good thing. So, right. yeah, I'm sure there's somebody Catholic it's out there that knows exactly reading. what it means. And then distemperature. Mm -hmm. Thou art uproused by some distemperature. You kind of mentioned that that's like, like, like maybe something's being bugging you. illness. It's yeah. almost like an illness. Yeah. And then my intercession likewise steads my The help foe. I'm coming to you for. Uh -huh. I'm coming to you for intercession for help. Like help and it will help too. not just me, but my enemy. Right. Uh -huh. Yes, what that means. That was part of the riddle. Oh, here up at the top. Shrift is oh. help. Yeah. Oh no, shrift, shrift. is to be sh to sh to be shrived or shriven is to give um, confession and um, okay. uh, shrift is to give. Okay, where where is it in content? Shrift and shrift. So a uh, homely in thy drift, uh, riddling confession finds but riddling. Yeah. Shrift. So you're telling me stuff. I can't shrive, give you shrift. I can't make your um, confession work to get rid of your sins if you don't it's tell me like hell, something. It is like hell in a over religious there. way. Yeah. We have a, a visitor to the studio. Two visitors if you count the dog. Hi, Carlo. Hello. Oh. If he's a good boy, I think okay. he can stay. He, he likes videos. Okay. Video chats. All right. He's a good boy. Hi, Carlo. Okay. 
All right, what part is he going to read? Carlo, everyone. He knows every. He's super wise. Okay, so uh, let's see. We had the characters. Oh, I have one more thing real quick. So word? on the top of page 22, um, Jesu Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy mm -hmm. sallow cheeks for Rosaline. Now, brine, I know from like fermenting things and pickling things, brine is salt water. Is this implying tears? It absolutely is. Or pickle juice. He had he probably he like, washed his face with pickle juice. <laughs> and then cried. Which so then sallow, sallow really burned cheeks. his eyes. Sallow juice? No, no, sallow. like wet cheeks sallow. from salt Is that water. What sallow means? Washed no. thy okay, sallow, sallow cheeks. cheeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was like, mm. because he was he was He's going to school. <laughs> yeah, no, he was in love with a girl that didn't love him back. Uh, in love. Remember his love could read by rope but could not spell. Maybe so then the characters, Friar is first, he's really like getting deep talking about mm -hmm. the bene the vices and virtues. And that's not by chance. Things. You know, that has something to do with the idea of the, the plot. There's, you know, you can use things for good or use things for evil. You get to make those choices. And some of the characters make better choices than others. True. Um, so he, that's actually thrown in there as a little, you know, Shakespeare announcement to the world, like be good. Yeah. Because otherwise. Right? Yeah, hate, you have a choice. Hate, hate we have will you, eat you up. Hate will eat you up. Right, and love can and, go. And here's Mrs. Olmos's advice: Hate makes you ugly. It's also Mrs. Olmos's sister's advice. Mm, yeah, and uh, according to the friar, it also eats you. Mm -hmm. And like a canker. Carlo agrees. Always. So, um, uh, so friar obviously then is like incredulous. Yes. And then he's like, but hold on. Yeah, but hold on. We can use this. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Not like, oh, you're in love. Let's and celebrate that. No. Romeo is single pointed. He's trying to be like, mm -hmm. doesn't Rosalind, doesn't you matter. told me not to like yeah. her. And so I didn't, but I found a real one. Yeah. This one likes me back. Yeah. And that's what all, that's it, right? It's what you do is you, you, you keep going until you find somebody who likes you. <laughs> and all right. All right. That was the great. next scene is um, in the street again, and we, we're back to the boys. We've got Ben Bolio right. and Rick Huchio. We're out and about. And it's the next morning. They've gone home, you know, had their night, and it's the next morning. They're meeting up again. I guess these guys hang out most times. And, right. Uh, but they're missing their third wheel, the, the whiny one. So Peter and, and, um, and Ben Bolio can be the same person. Okay. So whatever, which do you choose this time, Fiona? Oh, uh, I haven't been pushing. Do, and then I'll be Benvolio and Peter, and then that makes you the nurse, Lynn? Okay, I'll okay. be the nurse. So what about Romeo? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Romeo. Romeo comes in, so. Mm. So how about, wait, wait. Romeo's in quite a bit, he's a through line, basically. So the nurse and, and Peter should be two people. Benvolio and Romeo uh, can be the same people. Okay, no, wait, no, no they, they can't. can't. They do talk a little bit together. Peter could be Ben, one of Benvolio or Mercutio. They they do intersect a smidge, but not Which too one? badly. Who can be what? The nurse and Benvolio barely interact. Okay, so do you want me to be Benvolio and the nurse? Okay, and then okay. you could be Mercutio and Peter. That leaves me as Romeo. Benvolio and the nurse. Let me make sure I get in here. Again? There's a two. couple, one more at the end, I think, right? Maybe two. He's not um, <laughs> Carlo. Uh, Benvolio, I'm up there. Okay, so I am Benvolio and the nurse. I think I've got it. You guys ready? Okay. A street. <laughs> Enter Benvolio and Mercutio. Okay. And this has been heavily cut, just by the way. But it's okay. mm, where the devil should this Romeo be? Can came he not home tonight? Not to his father's. Oh, yeah. I spoke with this man. Oh, that same pale, heart, pale, hard-hearted hard wench that Rosaline torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinswoman of... Oh, kinsman, sorry. Oh, yeah. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. And any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master... How he dares, being dared. Sorry. Alas, poor Romeo. He is already dead, stabbed with a white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Okay, let's stop before we get into the whole thing about Tybalt. Yeah. Um, 
so it starts out with like, where's Romeo? I don't know. He didn't go home last night. And then there was this piece about, oh, well, hey, so a letter went to his house and the letter was from Tibble. Ooh, what do you think Tibble wants? Oh, I think it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. You know, like a duel. Yeah. It's a challenge. You were at my uncle's And then he's house. like, he'll answer it. Meaning he'll, yeah. he'll do it. He'll, he'll be in that duel. And Mercutius is like, oh, he can't. It's Tibble. He can't do it. Why? Now, and there's a little bit here. First of all, the first why is that Romeo is overcome by love already. He's already been killed by Cupid's arrow because of right. stupid Rosaline. And so that's just Mercutio. He just seems to really kind of harp on uh, Romeo's weakness with the woman kind of thing. Yeah. And um, not very kindly. But then he starts talking about Tybalt. What is Tybalt? Mm. Hmm. Did you already ask why? What is Tybalt? Why? What is Tybalt? More than a... More than Prince of Cats, I can tell you. Oh, he is the courageous ca captain of compliments. Hmm. The very butcher of a silk button, a duelist, a duelist. So there's quite a bit cut here, but basically all the speeches he makes about Tybalt are to tell you that Tybalt's a great sword fighter, but also somebody who's kind of a fancy man. So he's like a, um, somebody who reads and studies about dueling and, and uh, fighting with rapier and things like that. Um, so he's uh, kind of a pro at it. He prides himself in it. Mm -hmm. Here comes Romeo. Here comes Romeo. Signor Romeo, bonjour. You have you gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Mm. <laughs> That's me. That's you. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir. The slip. Can you not conceive? No, oh, pardon, good Mercutio. My business was great, and in such a case as mine, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much as to say, such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hand. Meaning to curtsy. That has most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. Uh. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Okay, let's pause for a second. That, that was all that, like playing with puns thing again. And, and sometimes I think this one really falls flat for modern audiences. They don't really know what most of this means. Because it starts out with like, um, yeah, I, I, I should have the right to strain courtesy when I have big, big things were going on for me last night. Sorry, I strained courtesy. I wasn't courteous. And he's like, oh, you mean strained from curtsying like your pants do because you're wearing tight pants today. Understand this. Romeo's on his way to his wedding. Remember that's happening today? He planned it. Okay. So he's in his cute outfit all ready to go. And he's wearing some fancy pants. And, um, and so Mercutio's like, look at those pants. You can't even curtsy, my girly looking friend. Uh, and so uh, Romeo jumps back in and he's like, oh, you mean curtsy? And Mercutio's like, you got it. And then he's like, oh, how courteous of you. And he's like, I am so courteous. He's like, like the pink of courtesy. He's like pink for flower. And you can guess at what that's supposed to be making a joke about. That's about being effeminate. And it's just like any boys in any time period making fun of each other's masculinity. And, but they love it. They're enjoying this bickering back and forth that they're doing. And that's what Mercutio is talking about. He My tells, oh, Benvolio will come between us. He's coming at me. And they're, just, they're just playing around right now, which is back to normal for them. Okay, go ahead. Why is not this better now than groaning for love? Now art thou sociable. Now art thou Romeo. Now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this dribbling love is like a great natural that runs lolling up and down to hide his bauble in a hole. There's a bit cut here in that whole natural thing. Mm. A natural is a, um, a fool, a, 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 like the village idiot. Somebody who's maybe not normal simple. in their development, mm -hmm. a simple person. And the thing is back in Shakespeare's time and previous, the, the person or people in the, in the village that would be that like developmentally delayed or very different thinking or different acting were kind of like the town mascots. So they were treated very fondly. They were, they were kept around as like, um, you know, like for good luck almost. Yeah, so luck. They, yeah, they, yeah, they really considered like taking care of the people that were very different in your community like that know. to be a blessing yeah. on them. And, but uh, he talks about your, the way that you were acting was like this village idiot running around town. And there's a little, there's some other puns in there that aren't very pleasant, but he's just saying, yeah, isn't this better? But the reason that Benvolio cuts him off is because he's starting to be kind of mean again. Oh, sorry. 
I had a dog. Did you, are you, you I am, sorry. Um, stop there, stop there. Here's Goodly Gear, and the nurse and, and Peter enter. Oh, a sail, a sail! Peter! Anon! My fan, Peter. Good Peter, to hide her face for her fans, the fairer face. Gaji, good morrow, gentlemen. Gaji, good den, fair gentlewoman. Is it good den? Tis no less, I tell you, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of moon. Of moon. Oh, oof, out upon you. What a man are you? One gentlewoman that God hath made for himself tomorrow. Oh, by my troth, it is well said for himself to Mar, quoth a gentleman. Can say, or can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? Okay, so she shows up and immediately Mercutio is making fun of her. Mm -hmm. There's something about the nurse that draws that. She's a very obviously um, crude, simple person who's dressed up nicely because she works for a nice house of people, um, but they make fun of her um, immediately. And Mercutio's pretty cool about it, actually. So that's going to continue sorry, on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Romeo says, I can tell you, because she's asking for Romeo, I can tell you, uh, but young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. <laughs> sorry, Ed. Carlo Fluff? A little bit of Carlo Fluff in her face, mouth, mouth. There he is. Okay, there we go. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. She will indict him to some supper. Even Benvolio, who's usually super nice, jumps in. He's like, oh, she's going to ask him out. A bod, a bod, a bod. So ho. Romeo, will you come to your father's will to dinner thither? Okay, I know that's really confusing. But what uh, Mercutio was doing right there is pretending that he was a hunting dog. Like he was on the hunt, a bot, a bot. Like, like here comes this woman coming to get Romeo, like for a date or something, and and it's a joke. It's a really mean joke that they're, they're making. Really picking on because her because she's older. She's not attractive apparently, and she's lower class, and uh, and he's just, it's it's not good. So then Mercutio's like, we're leaving. Come on, we're gonna go eat. Um, oh, I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell. Lady, lady, lady. And cut from this is unfortunately one of the, my favorite or maybe least favorite parts to explain out of um, Romeo and Juliet. There's a song that Mercutio sings in the regular play and it's really gross. It's about um, eating um, pie in Lent. Now Lent is a time of uh, giving up things during um, the religious holiday between what we call Fat Tuesday or Mardi Gras in February and Easter. And Lent is a time where you give things up and traditionally it was a time where they gave up things like meat. Um, which really corresponds with having to give up meat because there isn't any, uh, because it's late winter, it's before the baby animals are being born and being, you know, so they can slaughter new meat, which is what they did for Easter. That's why things like baby pigs and baby lambs were the most, um, you know, common uh, Easter foods. So this is before Easter when things are getting a little bit low and they would just like be like, okay, we're going to be, you know, we're going to call this a religious thing. We're going to give up these things until we can have a big feast. And so normally they'd be avoiding meats of any kind. And so the song that he's singing to the lady is about a rabbit pie, hair pie, in the, like, that you could eat in Lent is better than, and, and a bad, ugly, moldy one too. He's reading, he's really talking about it being a, he calls it a hoary hair pie, because horror frost is a fuzzy frost that looks like mold. Okay, that's what he's saying, is a moldy rabbit pie is better than, nothing in Lent and so he's saying to Romeo well I guess you can't get that one girl but this one's good enough I guess if you can't get what you want Aww. it's a really mean thing to do to the nurse so if you're reading the full text and you see that song it's a really mean song and it doesn't look good for Mercutio he just looks like a jerk right now making fun of older ladies they're just there to Not talk cool. he doesn't even know her and he's made fun of her looks he's made fun of her intentions with Romeo, it's her status, etc. Dummy. Yeah. Not nice. Yeah. All right. Um, I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? Um, I don't know. It's uh, Romeo, a gentleman. A gentleman nurse. A gentleman nurse that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. And speak everything against me. I'll take him down. And a uh, work. 
uh, wait, yeah, and were lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall, scurvy knave. I am none of his flirt gills. I am none of his skeins mates. And thou must stand by too, and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure. Peter. I saw no man use you a pleasure. If I had, my weapon would quickly have come out. I warrant you. I dare draw as soon as another man. I, if I see occasion in a good quarrel, and the law on my side. Now, before God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave. Okay, stop right there. So that whole little bit there was like the nurse lady's like, oh, who is this? Oh, how dare he? he can't talk to me that way. I'll take him on. I'll take anybody on. And it comes across a little comically, actually. And yeah. They're still kind of making fun of her. Even Peter mm -hmm. is kind of making fun of her. But at, at first she's just flustered. Like, oh, who, who does he think he is? And even Romeo's not being especially no. nice. Yeah. Oh, scrubbing it. Uh, pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you out. What she bade me say, I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell ye, if ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly, it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and very weak dealing. And that's basically the, don't you mess with my girl. Yes. You know, if, you're, if you're serious, you better be serious about this, because don't, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he says, nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress, I protest unto thee. Good heart and a faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse, that does not mark me? I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. So basically, he didn't even say, oh no, I'm for sure serious. He just started to say, I protest. And she's like, okay, taken. Heard it. Got it. Mm -hmm. You're cute. You weren't as rude as your friends. Yeah. You're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Here's the plan. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon. Remember that was confession. Yes. And there she shall at Friar Lawrence's cell be shrived and married. Here's for thy pains. No, <laughs> truly, sir. Not a penny. <laughs> Go to, I say you shall. He gives her money. This afternoon, sir. Well, she shall be there. Farewell, be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend thee to my me to the master. And there's a big cut here. I should talk about it. Because in the actual one, this one was cut for a play that didn't have the same kind of balcony. Uh, with the actual balcony, you absolutely need something here. And that is for the nurse to bring back a rope ladder. Okay, so she has to go get a rope ladder from Romeo's mm -hmm. guy and then take it back to where she lives and, and uh, put Snake. it in, yeah, it has to be put wow. in place because they have to spend the evening together. And this is kind of a tough subject to talk about, but marriage isn't legal unless they consummate their marriage. And that's actually still true today, that marriage, part of marriage is a, is a physical relationship. And if it's not there, somebody who, who um, protests it and says, that's not a real marriage, like you're, you're not really married, they could get you unmarried. Like, annulled. Yeah, it's called annulled. And so the parents, if they found out they were married, but they hadn't been together at all, could be like, no, you're not. That is called consummating yes. the marriage. And so the rope ladder to get up the balcony would have been important if he couldn't climb up to the balcony in any other way. All right. So that's the nurse's job as well. Um, okay. Sorry. That was... Uh... Uh, farewell, be trusting, I'll quit thy pains. Farewell, commend me to thy mistress. Now God in heaven bless thee. Hark you, sir. What sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Did you ne'er hear say two men may keep counsel putting one away? I warrant thee, my man is as true as steel. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady, Lord, Lord, when twas a little prating thing. Oh, there is a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay knife aboard, but she, good soul, has a leaf to the leaf see a toad, a very toad as see him. I anger her sometimes and tell her that Paris is the properer man, but I'll warrant you, when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. All right, so this is actually kind of important that the nurse throws in this little bit of information. Paris is also still trying, and whenever the nurse teases her about Paris maybe being a better match for her than Romeo, mm -hmm. uh, Juliet gets mad. 
yeah, she is not into it. So clearly she's not into Paris and clearly she is into Romeo. Um, but that does complicate things, doesn't it? All right, commend me to thy lady. I a thousand times. Yes. Exits. Peter, and on. And then they exit. All right, let's talk about this one. Scene four, events on the streets. Yeah, so what words? There's a few in here that yeah, are Yeah, there's up. some interesting, she has interesting language, I, I Just, find. Yeah. Um, where am I? Flirt gills and skeins mates. Yeah, <laughs> yes, those are big. Uh, low people. Those are low people. Flirt gills might be like the ladies of like of low mm. quality that he yes. hangs out with and skeins mates or his his scurvy knave friends. Okay. And full of his ropery. Um bad behavior. Full of himself. Just yeah. Himself. Foolery. Foolery and ropery are the same thing. Okay. No, no, so foolery. Mm -hmm. um, also, we just have bonjour, but I imagine many of your students know that that is hello in French. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they know that. Oh, now they do. Bonjour means hello in French. But senor is not. But senor is not. So he's actually senor Romeo bonjour. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that should have been Italian. So bonjour, right? But maybe? it says bonjour. bonjour. I don't know. They use other French words in this. That is true. Maybe in the full text, Mercutio is thing. using a lot of fake accents. And he's yeah. also talking about people pretending to, to speak in accents and dressing up and acting all Frenchified. And so mm. what he sees in Romeo is somebody who's acting more like fashionable than he really is. And so he's making fun of him by using a foreign word. And I think it's actually kind of funny if he uses two languages. There you go. I, yeah. I do that all the time. Which is funny. To me. Okay. All right. Anything else? Um, that's, uh, I mean, so okay. we talked about several things. We did. Along the way, we did talk about some of the words. Um, the so, in the uh, pale is any cloth yeah, a, in the versal? Cloth, like a dishcloth. Ah. Universal? Universal, the whole world. Oh, universal. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And the word universal, by the way, means like all the inclusive. All yeah. Inclusive. Yeah. All inclusive. So the whole world. Okay. All right. So, uh, Mercutio in this one is just uh, all about sort of teasing Romeo, then teasing the nurse. Yeah, that kind of defines yeah. his character. That he thinks it's funny. Puns are funny. Making fun of people is funny. Yeah. Uh, and and he, he just mean. yeah he's not very happy when it isn't like that. He he actually has to change things up when people are unhappy. He goads them into yeah. uh, playfulness, or they get angry and leave. True. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like dealing with too many yeah. emotions. And then yeah. Benvolio. Yeah, he he not likes, much tries of, to stop the fighting yeah, when it between, becomes fighting. Right. But he also does say that, oh, she's going to invite him to suffer. So he's not like completely innocent. He doesn't jump in and sing the ugly songs and stuff like that. But right. he's not like stopping it either. It is still the company you keep, right? You tend right. to adopt some behaviors. Right. With, uh, Mercutio and, and Benvolio mm -hmm. are friends, but clearly one is not the same temperament as the other. Right. And then, as you mentioned, Romeo in this scene, um, he is ha having left the friar. He's preparing for his wedding. Yes. And so he's fancily dressed. And then... Um, and in a good mood. Right. Yes. And in a good mood. He's excited. And he's then happy. he's got to tell the nurse when and where. Like, mm -hmm. what, so he happening. gives a plan to We're the nurse. Down. And please... And he's nice to her. He gives her Say money. nice things about me and to her. she's acting crazy and weird. And yes. And he's all... He's nice to her. He's, he's polite to her. Which is important because the nurse is won over by him. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And then the nurse, of course, is sent to find mm -hmm. Romeo mm -hmm. to figure out what's the deal. What is the time and place? And also... And to warn him to be nice to her girl. That's right. Yes. Or else. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what she's going to do about it, but she does try to lay it down. Like, you well, you better be good to her. You better uh -huh. not be messing around here. That's right. Um, which she's, So she's protective in her own way, too. But, I but only it. for a second, because the minute he's, like, polite back... And she's like, oh, you're like, great. Oh, you're perfect. You're awesome. I've never heard boys who were polite before yeah <laughs> and then peter in this is uh, as a servant yeah, yeah um, but he's escorting the nurse yeah, but he isn't but he also but says like, like i didn't hear anything that mean that they were saying to you that i needed to defend you yeah so he kind of played along with it a little bit too mm -hmm. yeah interesting he's, he's not an innocent in that little situation too all right, it's all so. at the expense of the poor nurse so now it's really it's just is it just juliet and nurse yeah do which yes. do you prefer fiona I just did nurse. Do you want to do yeah. nurse? Well, I'm not sure if we can do yeah. nurse. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Adjustment, like a chiropractic. Yeah. I will. I, I do just have. Up. I have the best 
solid seat. I'm just going to put my leg up here. Oh, that's great. Nice. Look at that. Nobody can even so tell. Cozy. That's so cozy. That's not sweet. weird, right? That's not a little weird. Okay. Does it look like it? Can't even tell. It doesn't even, it looks like you have an armrest now, though, Fiona. Now you could, you could be a hand upon that cheek. Yes. Okay. That's <laughs> about that. Okay. Okay. So we are back at uh, Juliet's place, the Capulets, at the okay. orchard again. Um, and she's, and this would have been played with her on the balcony saying all this. She spent a lot of time on her balcony talking to herself. And um, this is interesting. I think this still applies. This is a, a young girl expressing her frustration that she asked somebody older than her who wasn't as passionate about the love affair she's in the middle of uh, to go run an errand and it's taking a long time. Mm -hmm. And it is taking a long time. The nurse met Romeo at nine o'clock. It's noon. I don't know where she's been. She's whatevering. Off spending that money, Romeo. Chatting. Gave her, whatever she's been up to, but True. she did not hurry home. And Juliet mm -hmm. is getting a little freaked out. Yep. Okay. And then it does not help. I mean, this is a little eyeshadowing that the nurse likes the suspense. Well, the nurse had to go up that ladder too. So that the, well, true. But I mean, even in this conversation, yeah. the nurse is no, super no, this is, not yeah. coming so, straight out and telling her what's up. Like many of the conversations, especially ones that have Juliet also in them, this is a two part thing. There's two things happening in it. It's not a, a surface conversation. You don't want to just believe the surface of it. We'll explain. Okay. <clears throat> the clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour, she promised to return. Perchance, she cannot meet him. That's not so. Oh, she's lame. Love's heralds should be thoughts which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams, driving back shadow over, shadows over luring hills. Therefore, do nimble pinions, doves, pinioned doves, draw love. And therefore hath the wind swift Cupid's wi Cupid again, Cupid wings, now in the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours, yet she is not come. <sighs> Had she affections and warm youthful blood, she would be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love, and his to me. But old folks, Many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh, oh God, she comes. Okay, hang on. Let's, let's pick a little bit of this part. She like tells about the time and she's not here yet. And, oh, maybe she can't find him. So she starts like having thoughts, like maybe he can't get there. Oh, no, th this isn't right. Like love should be like something that just, just goes immediately. Like love messages should just travel. No problem. Like, like the wind. Like, like the sun's beams and yeah. uh, like doves. And look, that's why Cupid has wings. Love should just be like back and forth like a text or something yeah mm. they didn't have those then they had nurses and <laughs> slow ones yeah, yes slower. and so this is taking a long time she's super frustrated she tells you that um that the nurse is lame because she's old and uh, she should be swift in motion as a ball if she knew how i felt she'd hurry mm. um and uh but she's Oh, here she is. <laughs> oh, oh, forget all that. Oh, here she is. Here okay, she okay, is. okay. Um, oh, honey nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Peter oh, was still with her. I didn't turn the whole page. Sorry. Peter, stay at the gate. Now, good sweet nurse. Oh, Lord, why looks thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good thou shamest the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am a-weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. What a jaunt have I had. I would thou hadst my bones, and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee, speak. Good, good nurse, speak. So what haste. Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? So in here, like right away, the nurse is pretending to be tired. Thick okay. faker. If she is tired, it's because she went and hung out for three hours before coming home. Um... So she's like, oh, just wait, I, I can't even get my breath. And Juliet has got a good point here. She's like, you have enough breath to tell me you're out of breath. You could have told me about now. You, you could have told me if this is a good, you know, if you met up with them, you could have told me quickly, is this good news? 
I do like though that she, she's like just say good or bad and I, I'll wait I'll, I'll wait for you yeah, to just, get over your because she's thingy. been worrying about this for three hours well you have made a simple choice you know not you know not how to choose a man Romeo no not he though his face be better than any man's yet his leg excels all men's and for a hand and a foot and a body though they be not to be talked on yet they are past compare he is not the flower of courtesy but i'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb go thy ways wench serve god what have you dined at home okay i love this line because this is really a lot of characterization here and she's just like taking her on a journey she's like oh you don't even know how to choose a guy oh yeah he's really good looking uh, yeah, but never mind. Uh, oh, but no, he's like super good and kind nice. And, and nice, but oh, never mind. You know what? You should just be a nun. Yeah, forget that. Don't What's even. What's for dinner? Yeah, you want, it was lunch. Do you oh, want lunch? We're, dine. we're dining. Yeah. No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? <gasps> Lord, how my head aches. What a head have I? It beats as it would fall into 20 pieces. My back or the other side. Oh, my back, my back. Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. Hey, Faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. Your love says like an honest gentleman and a courteous and a kind and a handsome and I warrant a virtuous. Where's your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says like an honest gentleman. Where is your mother? Oh, see how she did that. She's like, oh, I my bad. Oh. You, you said this, you love says like a blah, 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 and a blah, 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 and a blah, blah, blah. Hey, where's your mom? She doesn't finish it because why? Because she's trying to mess with Juliet. She wants to see just how upset Juliet will get. Is she testing her a little bit? A little. Oh, God, lady dear, are you so hot? <laughs> Mary, come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforth, do your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Yes. Now comes the wanton blood to you. Oh, now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. He'll be in scarlet straight and in your nose. Go, out to dinner. Hie you to the cell. So she, she comes out with the news. Hi to high fortune. Honest nurse. Farewell. So uh, that's all the news she had was like, yep, go to shrift, meaning go to the friar's place for confession. Say you're married. going to confession and um, then you can go because that's one of the one thing, you know, like that she can go do to have somebody escort her to the friars so that she could be alone with the friar for confession. So it's really the only way she can get um, privacy to be married. And so all the nurse had to say was like, Go to confession. He's waiting <laughs> it, there for you. Literally. But she strung it out that whole time just to see, maybe gauge how excited or into this is Julia. And Julia was super pretty wound up over it. Yes. Yeah. But she's happy now. And finally the nurse gets to have lunch. Oh, right. And this is actually again a short a shorter um scene. But yeah. let's see. Um oh, it's very short. Okay, well, let's let's uh, do our diary here. So we've got. Yes. What do you have any words? Yeah, that's the one. Solve? So I'm looking through here, and because it's so short, there's there's. I mean, there's some. Um, uh, we already talked about the that first part because we broke down like swift as a ball. What mm -hmm. what she's talking about? Love should be love's messages should go that fast. Um, um, we already know what that means. A jaunt is simply an adventure, right? Or a walk, or yeah, a, let's go for a walk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of. And um, normally a poultice. A poultice. You know, poultice is something you put on a wound or a sore yeah. arm or whatever, or just like to, to draw out the ache. ache. Mm -hmm. What is beshrew? 
in that okay put it in context so that, um oh my back my back be shrew your heart mm-hmm. for it's sending me like, about um it's kind of like a curse on you yeah uh, somebody who is a shrew or makes shrewish remarks who will be shrew you is going to say things like you're I hate you. You're blah blah blah. Maybe you're so you dummy. be shrew my heart. Like it's a curse upon my. Yeah, you know, it's a curse okay. on me. All right, and then so then in um in this scene, obviously Julia is super anxious. First awaiting the nurse, and then awaiting the news from mm-hmm. the nurse, and really doesn't get it until literally the nurse's the last very lines. last mm-hmm. bit. Yeah, yeah, so and the, then the the, the nurse's tension the, rises. Testing out. right, mm-hmm. right. Testing, 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 and then finally the gift. Yes. Okay. So that was that one. So we are now. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. <gasps> this is the last scene, the last scene. in and Act Two. Short. It is wicked short. Do you? Which do you want me to be Friar or you guys just want to? I have you, it. I have you been Friar. Why don't you be Friar? Be I'll be Romeo. You be Juliet. All right. Okay. Juliet. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Romeo. We're at Friar Lawrence's cell. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friar Lawrence and Romeo are there waiting. Okay. Oh gosh. She's really still waiting for the nurse, probably. I'm so nervous. So <laughs> smile the heavens upon this holy act oh. that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen. Amen. But come, what's come? What sorrow can? It cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love devouring death. Do what he dare. It is enough. I may but call her mine. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a foreshadowing again. So the friar's like, I hope this is a good idea. I hope heaven smiles down on us for this. And Romeo's like, it doesn't matter if I can just have her for myself and death can do what it wants. I don't care. Yeah. These violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die like fire and powder, which is as, which as they kiss consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore love moderately. Love, long love doth so. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. All these are great pieces of advice advice from the front. None of them take. None of them take. (laughs) Including the front. Violent delights have violent ends. So strong and and, yeah. and fast isn't a good idea right now. He says like they're like fire and powder, which as they kiss consume. So if you know anything like about explosive, um, explosive like black powder guns and things like that, when fire hits powder, as they kiss, they consume each other. They're gone. So you can't things that that come together with violence are over quickly and not good. It's not a good thing. Yeah. And he's he's saying um, uh, that honey the sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness and so you can't just too much of a good thing is bad all of a sudden like if you were to eat like big giant mouthfuls of honey you'd be like, oh it's too much right a little bit of honey is delightful so he's just saying you can't do too much so soon you know if you want to love for a long time you need to love moderately take it easy a little love spread out over time Slow and steady wins the race. Yes. He says, if you do this all at once, it's over too fast. Mm-hmm. And so he's trying to give him all this good advice. And, and Romeo is all, <laughs> yeah. all right. Your prior says, or enter Juliet. Oh, enter Juliet. Here comes the lady. Good evening to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him else is his thanks too much. Oh, Juliet. If the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. They are but beggars that can count their worth, but my true love is grown to such excess I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Come, oh. come, come with me, and we will make short, short work. For by your leaves, you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. So they're very sweet when they see each other. They say very lovely things. Yeah. And they, they yeah. can't wait. And he's like, okay, get away let's from each this. other until I got you married. Right. And so uh, that's the that's the end of the act. So let's do our, our yeah. hoozy dinky. So um, uh, so for, for me, we talked about a couple, a couple of them, this idea of the fire and powder, right? Which you talked about, which is relating it to explosives and um how it can consume yeah um but then 
um, no, that's uh, too swift means just quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I love this whole line. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. That's it really totally great. brings back like the tortoise in the hair. It thing. really, really does. Like, if you go too fast, you might end up just as slow as if you've taken your time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then down at the very bottom is um, till Holy Church incorporate two into one. So that's just combining. Like, uh, you know what right? a corporation is, right? It's when like people come together to yeah. form a corporation. To incorporate is to bring together. Right. And also when parts of uh, out, outer distances of towns get incorporated into mm -hmm. the main city. Yeah. So it's just brought in, brought together. That's right. Um, did you see anything else here that that mm -hmm. we need to chat about? I feel like that's a really dinky yeah, one. Yeah, it's just long. Okay, so the, so it's the, deed, the deed is done. If the story stopped here, did we say countervail? Countervail. Oh, okay. countervail. In context. It cannot countervail the oh. exchange of joy. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, there, there's nothing that can overcome. It can't can't outweigh. Yeah. So countervail would be like to outweigh. It won't outweigh how great I feel. Like no matter what happens, right? My love for her is worth it. Is it? I mean, maybe. Who are we to say? I don't know. Oh, is the answer. Is a I mean, right? Uh, you know what was interesting, uh, and I can't remember, and I'd have to look back at the reference. But this idea that tragedy is more about choices rather than like um, the event, right? The choice is the tragic choice. Mm -hmm. And of course, the end is awful. Is it wrong to choose great love against the odds? Whether it's death is... is mm -hmm. So is in a sense, I, is, I would is choose Romeo love. correct that he should follow through with his heart right now, even though it's definitely if, going to end up badly? But if we buy into the fact that it is true love, that they never falter through the whole play about their love for each other. But if they knew what was going to happen, wouldn't it be greater love to let each other go and not be part of this tragedy? It brings the households together, which is the whole reason for the play. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Is that they have to die in order does for it. We will have to or does it? This is a good conversation. On. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna I'm trying to think of a picture I might want to draw. I drew a very terrible picture. Oh, let's see it. Oh, what is it's it? It's really bad. What it's is it? this? Oh no, I love that. Wait, she, it looks like her. It's very faint. Is that Juliet? Is, is she waiting? Oh, we can there's draw two, anything, two there. anything from the act. Oh, wait, it looks like oh, the, nurse the nurse. Oh, the nurse with the chair. Oh, the nurse, because the nurse has a backache. Yeah, she's, she's tired. tired. She's going to sit down. And she's Juliet's very tired. Sleeping. And, and Juliet's looking like, very unhappy over here. Please tell me. Yeah. So let me explain the so. idea behind this, the drawing, okay? Not everybody that has to take a class where they study Romeo and Juliet has to do a drawing and by the way they can be stick figures they do not have to be artistically beautiful yes. but not artistically the idea, beautiful the idea behind doing a drawing is uh, that you're using a different part of your brain to process what you yeah. what you saw what you thought when you were um, reading these scenes and and also what will remind you of something you want to remember about them the most so you're, you're first of all you're you're making a selection you're choosing what you think was the most significant scene and then you're going to symbolize it in some way oh. and whether that's with um i don't know if this was the most significant but but it's a choice. I mean, do you remember choice. what that was all about? That was something yeah. that st stuck out to you. Yeah, the relationship yeah. thing. Yeah. And, and her, you know, her, her impatience mm -hmm. to find out. Both of the kids are very yeah. impatient to make this happen. Both of them. Impatience is like the theme of this whole act. Hurry, 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 hurry. Why are they in a hurry? Uh, good point. Can't they slow down? They could. What would happen if Wait. they did? Well, she might get married to another guy that's true mm -hmm. so that's she might her, have some motivation to hurry um his rush girls don't like him if they get to know him yes <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. that could be a problem that's true he seems like a nice enough boy mm, yeah i Just think a he little is. over eager yeah. perhaps yeah he's nicer than his friends it's true well i think the bully is okay he just wants to be in love with yeah okay so i just started to draw the nurse and you remember how when she first comes out and oh, they say they, a sail. They say a sail. So I just started, I'm going to probably put her on a boat just because okay. it makes me laugh to think of her on a boat. So I started to see Okay, what do you think that is? Because, you know, that's never, I've seen it portrayed many different times. Like yes. they're making fun of a hat. They're making fun of her dress. Uh, like, yes, yeah, something yeah. big and billowy. Like, like right? she's like a ship sailing in, or maybe she's big. Maybe she's big. And oftentimes, so that the more fabric you would have, mm -hmm. the more billowy it would be. So mm -hmm. my guess, mm -hmm. my she's thought. Got a she's big and she's got a big of, outfit. She could be losing control of a shawl. That's yeah, a cool idea. Yeah. So I've seen it played out in many different ways, but um, it's never 
flattering. No, it no, isn't. No. I think that's kind of the point though, mm -hmm. is because they're making fun of her. So we know it's not flattering, yeah, right? It tells us something about them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be stuck on a, okay. on a mask. So we are now concluding act two and, uh, in act two in Shakespeare is always like the, um, the plot begins. Okay. Basically now we have things are in motion. Things have happened. Uh, act three is always where all the bad stuff goes down. Any problems that have to be solved happen in act three. Act three is the turning point and it's about to get real. Yeah. Okay? So we're going to, um, stop for now and, uh, you can catch the act three talk, uh, very soon. Oh, I didn't even say, say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Oh, oh, hi. Bye. I was totally drawing because look, hold on. I actually put like an R and a J on her sail. Yeah, she's like <laughs> stuck on the sail. Okay. Bye. Bye.